Hi, welcome. This is my annual report of my phone. Uh, Realme V5 5G. It's been a year since I have bought this phone. And it's been a good boy for the whole year. So here's my annual report of it. We're gonna do some basic review, give some conclusion. And that's pretty much it. So let's just get started. So first, Realme V5 5G. It was released as the cheapest 5G device, which is not true nowadays, since there's something like the Q3 Pro, uh, the Realme X7 itself, the Realme V3. Um, yeah, there's other more released now since this this was released. So, yeah, build quality, it's good. Um, the back, this back is a ve uh, very shiny plastic. It has two tone, and if you can do this, sometimes I uh, like so something right there. It shines violet, then blue. Uh, yeah, it's it's plastic, so shiny plastic. So it will be a one huge fingerprint magnet it's a problem uh, because I have I do have quite the oily hands although I try my best to avoid it but I my grippy grippy hands gets really oily so it gets some uh, as you can see fingerprint marks everywhere oh it's everywhere it's kind of mm, it's really really bad but we have a Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, which proved to be quite <laughs> sturdy because I've dropped some stuff in front of this and nothing happened. Uh, now you see from the side, the frame, it's frame here, 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 and here. It's metal. It's alumin aluminum. Or so I think, but I haven't done anything to verify if it is indeed aluminum or not. But from the feel of it, from the uh, from the things I have, like there, if you can hear it, feels more like metal than plastic. Rather than if I hit it like this, it's different. So it sounds more like giving me assurance that it, the frame is indeed aluminum than plastic. So, let's talk about more of it. In the back, you can see the camera modules. We have the wide. We have the wide here. Uh, I forgot what the other is. Portrait. Here's the portrait. Here's the... Um, uh, I don't know, macro, I guess. And then this is the... Um, black and white sensor I forgot I, I didn't pay attention to the phone because much less to the much less of I usage of it I don't really use any of the camera modules in this except for the main camera shooter which is a wide angle lens camera because it's better that way all other camera modules in this phone are just basically just gimmick <laughs> and nothing worthy worthy to <laughs> It's basically a thing, and then we have also the two-tone flashlight. So yep, and in the front we have our camera module here. It's which is a cutout, a pin hole, which I will be honest, it's disgusting. It's very distracting, and trying to optimize your apps to fit with this is very very frustrating because I, I don't whenever I start up sometimes there will be black border around here one clean black uh, border and it just takes away the uh, immersion from the game because sometimes if you, if you record there, there will also be a big, big bag uh, a big black border around here so yeah it's a problem so <laughs> uh, 
also in the hardware here is the fingerprint uh, power sleep button here it is on the top we have a noise cancelling mic and this side volume rocker volume rocker and ahem, sorry and this is your sim card tray which houses a double sim or one sim and sd card slot so depends if you do you want to go uh dual sim on this or you uh, do you want to go with one sim and put an sd card to put your extra files accessible example for your music files etc and the bottom side of the phone we have a uh, fingerprint a mic usb type c and your single speaker grill now there's also a speaker grill here at uh here at the top but it's not an amplified ear speaker so you can't do any stereo sound effect with this which is kind of sad because this phone has a uh, dolby atmos which is good uh when i try with it with my empty ones it sounds really really good but having one single speaker kind of especially when i want to play music out loud with the uh, with the speaker itself which is kind it's loud it's good but being the only one speaker on this phone it's not enough <laughs> kind of takes away so that's it for the hardware and the, the look so nothing much i have encountered not many problems except some little chips on the uh, painting coating here and the camera module if you can see it yeah you can see some whiteness over there uh, that's due to it being a bump so when i place it on my table it gets chip it gets chip but it's only the painting uh, painting or coating around it and not the actual module itself which is uh, refreshingly good nice because sometimes if you get scratches on the protective lens this glass here that protects the camera modules it affects your way of shooting images it gets uh, there's some real scratches you can see in your camera so but to be honest, uh, there's, no, there's no scratches can be found. It's just chipping away at the painting it has. Which is good. It's just good. Really, really good. So, I applaud to Realme for that one. Now, let's talk about software. When I got this phone back in uh, 30th of August last year, 2020, it came shipped with Android 10, which is Realme UI 1.0. Now, after a year i got i got to use the phone in realme ui 1.0 for about okay, august september october november december for around five months five to six months because uh in january i got the realme ui 2.0 update which is based on android 11 so here we are android 11 come on <laughs> Uh, come on, you 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 are <laughs> a hassle sometimes. Come on, yep. Realme UI 2.0, uh, based on Android 11. Eh, the software updates on this is has been not that spectacular. Uh, it gets an update every two or three months, which is kind of baffling sometimes because. I want Realme to do a monthly update on this one. I checked the Chinese forum for this phone and uh, Chinese Realme BBS, which is a China-based forum for all of their products. And yeah, the last update for this was 23rd of June, which is like what now? To almost oh two months away already, and if it's not gonna get any update this september 23rd it's three months so yeah that's the downside of it um the other side of it is that the os realme ui 2.0 has been pretty pretty smooth to use 
I have no problem with scrolling, etc. Uh, come on, if you focus, light. No, okay. Frog. How about you turn off your bed? Ah. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. That if we go like right there. Man, yeah. scrolling is not a problem. It's fast. It's smooth. It has a ninety hertz display, which is provides real smooth. At first, I didn't get the, the difference between a 90 and a 60, but I kind of get used to 90 after a while. I don't know if... I don't know. <laughs> I've, I'm still used to 60Hz display, so I have no problem navigating it. It's not a problem for my eye. I don't feel disgusted, but I did feel the effects of the 90Hz display on this one. Sadly, the, uh, I haven't played any apps that... Uh, played any games or found any apps that make use of the 90 hertz display of this thing so i just kind of set the display settings of this to auto so i have i have it in 90 hertz uh browsing using the files uh scrolling through and i have no problem on that and then i'll revert to 60 when i play games and also reverts back to 60 when i record some of my gameplay now the problem with the ui it's the same problem with every oss nowadays yeah uh, once you kind of break them <laughs> it's really hard to recover them i once i once tried to debloat this i want to try remove the its own video app music app uh, things I don't like the wallet app, the team store app, which I can't remove the team store for some reason because it's locked. But the other Realme OS has been successful in removing those, but I don't. So yeah, when I start started uh, removing those bloatware, once this phone restart, it basically took around <laughs> two days before I can fully use this phone again. And after after I get to use it again. It kind of resetted on its own, which like baffled me. So I, I I have so after this has been resetted forcefully, I haven't done anything yet. So uh, I basically refuse to remove any bloatware anymore <laughs> because I'm kind of afraid that I may I might break this accidentally again. Even though I've asked the forum for I uh, XDA forums for which software are safe to remove uh, through ADB by connecting this to the PC and yeah so yeah I, I really got almost a heart attack on that one because oh my god this is my only phone where do I get one if I truly break this one and because this is not na this phone is not native to my country I basically bought this from another country so yeah I have no support for this <laughs> and basically all uh, mobile repair shops here in my area are basically incompetent <laughs> so yeah there's that so I'm not gonna remove any bloatware from this there are so many bloatwares in this phone yeah realme OS it doesn't have google apps which a blessing on its own but at the same time uh, yeah I would call that as a blessing because it would it's not hard to remove them Hey, um, I mean, it's not hard to install a Play Store because, as you can see here, here, if we zoom in again, I have a Play Store. You can just download a Play Store from uh, APK Mirror or something like that because I trust APK Mirror because they don't have that bloatware in the site. They don't have ads. You can just download the file directly and just boom, install the Play Store in this directly because it already has a uh, google play services already installed so installing a play store is not a problem it's just download the apk file go ahead uh yeah during the start of this phone uh because this is not a global rom it's a china rom so uh those who try to buy this phone is gonna suffer from its keyboard <laughs> one gripe in this so I'll, the keyboard ah uh, yes the keyboard uh where it is uh, the, the basic keyboard this phone ships is this this i fly ime customized version 
So that one is a nightmare to use because it's tailored for Chinese. <laughs> but it should be it should be obvious for me already. But it was a nightmare to use because I I barely I can barely read Chinese kanji, the simplified version of Chinese. Like oh god, pinyin, <laughs> it's hard. So yeah. I did manage to change the layout of it into a QWERTY keyboard which uh, it was it was fine it had difficulty finalizing my uh, finalizing the words that I want to type there's also one time I accidentally managed to make it into a T9 key, uh, keypad if everyone remembers T9 keypads from Nokia 3310 and is similar uh, yeah, there was also that that kind of problem with the keyboard. So the next one is the browser. It was a hassle to use. Uh, yeah, it, one it was a hassle to use. Secondly, it's not optimized somehow for English pages, so it will load very very slow with English pages somehow. I deactivated it in high hit it uh where's my hidden apps here are the hidden apps uh the app market the brain assistant the browser the music the recorder team store the video app and the wallet app so i have i have those hidden the browser is kind of horrendous not um uh, not loading any english sites that fast but once it opens a chinese centric site it's for example the realme bbs site for realme phones to discuss and about and announce any release of updates it loads fast it has no problem loading those but anything else yeah it's a problem so I had a hard time. It was kind of slow downloading uh, Play Store APK, but once I did, I installed it. I installed it. I put them on my hidden apps, and then installed Brave Browser, which is a better browser, and then downloaded a custom keyboard. For me, I choose Touchpal Lite because it has no ads. It ha doesn't have anything, just simple keyboard. Uh, install, you can install your favorite uh, uh, diction, uh, language for your keyboard. So I have no problem for that. I installed both English and Japanese uh, language for the keyboard and I have no problem typing away. So basically that. Another thing about this is that Realme V5 doesn't have the same functionality as the one in Realme X2. Uh, in which you can use your uh, mobile day uh, no uh, your 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi at the same time to increase your speed somehow this doesn't have it which is kind of sad it's really really sad I uh, would love if it has there but eh, compromises something you have to deal with and there's also something finicky about this with the 5 gigahertz. Um, normally, for some games, uh, normally in games when trying to play a games, 2.4 gigahertz have no problem. However, when I try to 5 gigahertz connection and then try to play games, it's not just games. Some of the apps installed in my in this phone, whenever you try to play with five gig, uh, whenever you try to use them con while connected to a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, it basically shits on itself. It doesn't load, or basically constant loading, lagging every four to five seconds. It just uh, it was a hassle. So when whenever I try to browse the internet I connected a 5 gigahertz but whenever I try to access my other apps for example like a the Shopee store which I which I did use to buy this so I have to connect to 2.4 gigahertz it's a big gripe I don't know it is this is some kind of software issue rather than hardware issue because other phones of my relatives that I've used for fun for just tinkering around 
swapping for between 2.4 to 5 gigahertz i have no problem i have no problem you know there's this one however has big problems with the wi-fi connection and i don't know why it's such a big issue uh, another another software graph probably um teams teams this is the first time i experienced that uh themes are luck like jesus christ you're gonna pay for themes there are themes that are free to use and then you can't use it because if you try to use a theme with a theme file there's something like a tth i was it tth or that that theme file if you use those you're gonna lock the five minute uh trial for that what the fuck <laughs> can i can i just change my theme why do i get a pay 7 yuan for a new theme i get it if if the creator of the theme wants to be paid sure but there are also themes out there that doesn't need uh doesn't uh they release their custom themes for free i want to use it why do you gotta lock me for a tri uh for a five trial period there's also the there's also the transition between realme ui 2.1 to realme ui 2.2 2.0 in 1.0 uh, apps like music and videos this uh, are basically just that they play music they play videos that's it they check your local directory to do that for you in realme ui 2.0 the music and videos app basically made me hide them away because i don't want to see the disgusting faces on my uh, screen i don't want to i don't want to see them when i scroll up and find my apps i don't want to see them because they became basically just an uh the over bloated kind of app your music app basically now has uh goes online to search for podcasts and etc i don't want that music app is just music app it plays music files from your lo uh, local directory it should just be that so nah i basically swap it for music a lot a free a free app from the play store it doesn't have any ads it's just play files browse your directory you can play your music there no hassle no strings attached just that and i paid the so i paid for the paid version of music because that's worth it <laughs> it's a shame that we have uh no it's not a paid app it's a free app with no no hassle, no everything. It's just an offline music player. It's uh, it has a pretty small, um, pretty small file size too, so it's not a problem to install. But because of that work, I I did uh, I did give them for that. So for the how do I play my video apps, uh, video files, and then I I went with MX Player. It's same shit, but it's the best there is for its uh function because i like the functions of mx player although this time it also got bloated as well so i look for an old version of it installed it and called it a day no problem just that uh what's more aside from those gripe uh i think there's nothing more to say about it I just hated the themes. It's one that infuriates me the most. Uh, also, because this phone doesn't have a AMOLED screen, so it doesn't have the always on display. So, not a problem for me. It's not something that I'm I'm gonna hound about. The, I, my, old, my father's old Samsung J2 has an AMOLED screen, and that one kinda sucks. <laughs> Uh, I know that AMOLED screens have come a long way and have gotten better over the time, but eh, I don't need that accurate. I just want to see uh, movies. I want to see. I'm satisfied. I don't need to be that savvy one that wanted the true blacks and everything. I just want to see, be entertained by what I see, and that's it. Cyberman, I have no problem. Except Bruno too. 
Oh god, Brino. Ah, thank god I've disabled most of it already. Because Bruno is so annoying. Especially when I play with my headset. This empty once. When I whenever I press me uh twice on the button on a, on it to go next, Bruno kinda photo bombs and like what do you want <laughs> in Chinese by the way. So I had to deal a lot with that. Also with the up market, which a problem I've solved after updating Google's stupid app, corrupt the web view app. God, I hate Google sometimes. Because that one, I kept it unupdated, and then the, the default up market for Realme UI keeps popping up every five to twenty minutes. Whenever I'm in game, whenever I am in an other app, it's annoying as hell. But aside from those, there's not no problem for the software. There's tons of flex, uh, tons of customization. However, there's also tons of restrictions because uh, you have to rely on the team store app for any more detailed person uh, personalizations. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Password biometrics. Let's talk about that. Password, yeah. Password biometrics. There's your fingerprint. There's your uh, face scan, face ID, whatever, clone, whatever. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fast. Uh, yep, it's pretty fast. Once it learns your face. And the one that has been in save for my phone. As me with a longer beard, a longer mustache, and a longer hair. So the fact that it recognizes me with a shorter beard, shorter mustache, and shorter hair, it's pretty impressive. But you shouldn't uh, rely on that too much because it's software based and there's no hardware uh, like those in iPhones. You shouldn't rely on it too much. The fingerprint is pretty fast for it. You can also configure it whether you want to do a light touch when you just uh, touch it and then it unlocks or you got to do a hard touch where you have to press on the button itself for it to start recognizing your fingerprint and then open up. So there's also like a uh, pick to wake up if, you, uh, if this is on the table you pick it up. Eh? Uh -huh, uh -huh. and then it wakes up but I don't I don't use that because I hate it 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 gets waking up for wrong reasons I just want to put it in my pocket and just turn on and then it and then I accidentally press uh, touch the fingerprint scanner and then it unlocks well and then while it was in my pocket and just the screen is pretty sensitive <laughs> to be honest so it starts tapping on whatever it wants to tap on the screen while it was on my thigh under my pocket <laughs> so it brought me a ton dozen of problems so uh, i disabled the uh pick to wake up function i disabled that so let's uh let's talk about cameras uh cameras stock camera app the stock camera app is pretty nice it's pretty nice there's your photo and there's your video which can do 60 fps 1080p and 4k 30 fps pretty nice there's also the night the night function it's absolutely garbage it's worthless don't even think about using this part of the app now we also have the portrait aha uh -huh. Portrait, portrait, portrait. Which is pretty nice. The, uh, it also takes two uh, pictures of the thing you're, uh, you're taking an image upon. One is the normal without the background blurring and etc. One is the uh, with post-processing. Removing background, 
etc. Sometimes the portrait is a, a bit finicky in trying to blur out the background. Sometimes it's just aggressively blurring the uh, edge part of my hair. It's basically like it's uh, it's uh, basically if someone try applied a Gaussian blur on my head and basically aggressively blurring a, a ton of detail for my hair. So yeah, it's I know phones are not that good in uh, making a blur in your background, especially when you have uh, a kind of messy hair. Before I had longer hair, I had my hair cut and everything. Next, we have the 48 megapixel. What's the point? <laughs> Aside from bigger file size, it, it uh, it's not different from the usual photo capturing. It's hard to justify this as, and it's aside from more pixels to work with, especially when you're gonna do some post processing. But the details it captures is per uh basically the same with the stack photo. With stock photo, yes. Now, there's all there's more of this. We have slow mo. We have time lapse. Pretty fun. Movie. If you press movie, it will turn the camera app into something special UI. Yeah, it's basically turns into something like this. Like, uh, it it has that. It kind of turns into into a cleaner UI if you wanna. Uh, record videos, which is I find pretty pretty good. Um, where there are more, we have export, which is basically manual, the um, manual uh, control over your cameras. We have panorama shot. If you want panorama shot, we have stack scanner, which. Uh, a hit or miss depending on what can you're uh, scanning oops I close that we have the ultra macro wordless the macro module in this phone is 2 megapixels not worth it <laughs> you better take it in 48 megapixel and just just zoom in afterwards you're gonna have a better day than that and then they there Brino scan uh, the last set. There's also the Bruno scan, which I don't use because I got Bruno disabled. Bruno is different for global release, by the way. Any Realme or Oppo devices on global, Europe, Southeast Asia, India, those phones, those Realme and Oppo phones don't have Bruno. They have a basic assistant, but it's not called Bruno. And it doesn't have the functions of Bruno. China ROMs, however, have Bruno. That's basically what the one that annoys you the most. <laughs> if you don't take care of her fast enough. <laughs> so yeah. Aside from that, because this phone has a shitty night camera, I've installed Gcam. Now, I, we have Gcam, as you can see. Uh... Okay, okay, there, there. You know that well, that is Gcam. Ah, with that, it has a better night sight. Night sight is so good. Night sight is so good. I have taken pictures with uh, what do you call Astro. Um, at first with the night sight, it takes dark areas really, really good. So, example, if we take. For example, let me take a picture down below here on my near feet. Okay. Okay, we have it. Take a look at that. It takes good pictures of it. Well, if I try it with my with the use wall. If I try it with a use wall, it's horrendous. And it takes longer time to process the photo than in the Gcam ported. Like, holy crap. 
Girl me, are you serious with your photo app? Ah, uh, here it is. It's even blurrier. <laughs> it's far more blurrier than everything else. You're gonna, you're gonna, I'm gonna upload this and probably in MGR or post AMG. So you can take, uh, see it for yourself. But, yeah, it's shitty. Uh, Realme stock camera app have shitty uh, night mode while installing a ported Gcam is better. There's also the Astro with it, which is really, really good. Uh, sometimes if, if in my place, if there's no rain and there's just clear sky, I spend basically picturing the stars. It looks really good. It feels satisfying to take pictures with. Now, we're done with that. Let's talk about battery. The, uh, the battery in this phone basically has a 5000 milliamps and has a charging of 30 watts, the super dark technology. <clears throat> At first it was super vook, but then it became super dark. Now, this phone can last up to 3 days with light use. Uh, heavy games and wouldn't last a day. Especially when you're gaming, especially when you're playing heavy game like Genshin Impact. So yeah, there's that. But charging this phone just takes an hour, although it gets uh it, it uh it's not toasty, but it does get warm when it's uh charging. But uh, when it, whenever you this phone is plugged to its charger and it's already full. It uh, it doesn't heat up anymore. It knows that it's full. It stops charging on its own uh, uh, while it's still plugged. So I like that. So whenever I plug this phone during the night and I forgot, uh, I sleep basically in my bed. I slept. I uh, not slept. That's a past tense. And uh, whenever I sleep, I forgot that I have this phone plugged to the charger. It doesn't overcharge, which I kind of like. I really kind of like because if if this was the other kind of smartphone that I used to have, it will really uh it will really hit up because it was overcharging and basically kills the battery. This, however, has been very very good with battery usage. <clears throat> so yeah, un unless you really turn up the brightness, there's oh oh yeah, there's also this thing about this screen. Whenever you're in sunlight, open sunlight. The contrast basically apps to not 11 but 12. I mean, it really boggles me sometimes. The contrast is so high, like it bewilders me. So you can catch it if you have this phone under the direct sunlight and then you go to a shade, then you can see that it's changing its contrast, dialing it down when you're under the shade. It knows that the phone knows that. It is under sunlight and consciously turning up its contrast for the sake of you to be able to see what you are seeing on the screen. And it consumes a lot of battery power. I don't know how to turn this off. This is also one of the gripes I have with its software. But as much as I hate that part, I'm also thankful about that part because there are times that uh, apps on here are, already, are always in dark mode. Because I, I switch, I force switch my apps to light mode during the day. I know it's hersey, but I change to dark mode during night. Uh, and it's a really. Uh, I think that's been my routine about this phone already. So yeah, now let's go to the next next part, games. Now. Oppo in Realme phones comes with a, a game boosting app of their own called GameSpace. Basically, GameSpace, what it does is take every uh, games that you have on your phone and place it in one app. Basically, shortcuts place in one app and then play it from there. It will boost, it will free up some RAM, boost, network, etc. And basically disables any background ahem, background uh, processes to allow 
to allow more resources for the game. So yeah, this has three modes. When you swipe this up, you can see low power mode. If you want a low power, which is bullshit, it doesn't do that anyway. <laughs> um, these apps will drain battery anyway. So yeah, there is balance mode, which is yeah, balance mode. That's that's the only thing matters. Low power mode or this pro gamer mode, as it says, you don't need them because this phone. It doesn't have the SOC on this phone. The Dimensity 720 SOC doesn't have any kind of boost on it. It's uh, it runs from 645 megahertz and it's idle state, and then it only goes to two gigahertz on all cores, um, both on both on the big cores and uh, uh, lower cores, uh, small core, smaller cores. It's basically, yeah. Aside from, uh, aside from balance mode, low power mode means nothing. Pro gamer mode means nothing but headache, because pro gamer mode, it's as it says, it will consume more battery, and you don't want to do that with this phone. Pro gamer mode does nothing, especially when games are not optimized for your phone. I'm talking about you, Call of Duty. This phone can handle Call of Duty no problem. It handles PUBG no problem in Ultra HDR, which I installed because I don't like playing PUBG. It's just too clunky for me. Although it's nice from what I'm playing, it's been nice, but it feels clunky to me. It's not that fast paced action, fast paced like Call of Duty does. So yeah, I can install it and just stay with Call of Duty. Now, there's also something here, for example, if we go, uh, uh, oh yeah, this app, GameSpace, works with the game controller for Oppo called the uh, Oppo C1 gamepad. We don't have those, they're not, uh, they're not in sale here. I can't find any listing about it, and we do, and when I do find about it here in my uh, country, it basically is uh, a scammer, <laughs> an obvious scammer, of course. So uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. Just, uh, I tried doing it with this X7 Bluetooth Terios, but the only game that will f work with it is PGR Punishing Grey Raven. Honka Impact and Genshin Impact doesn't. Call of Duty just doesn't want you uh doesn't want any controller except for the official playstation 4 controller or xbox one controller which is infuriating i know they want some le uh, legit controllers only use but fuck you so aside from that play, uh the gaming for four months of this spawn let's start with call of duty because more people know about it more people play about uh with it and basically locks to medium uh, medium in graphic quality and high in fps so basically it goes 60 when playing multiplayer and lock to 40 when playing battle uh uh how do you call this <laughs> battlegrounds i forgot already uh yeah it locks 40 in battlegrounds and while playing in multiplayer it goes to 60 uh then a comp a com uh, in a, in an accompaniment of it uh this is n the temperature on this phone when playing games is dependent of your uh ambient temperatures of your room the ambient temperatures around you because for example here in my room i have my ceiling fan uh spinning its fan even playing Genshin Impact, it doesn't heat up past 40 degrees. But if I don't have that one on, and I play this, uh, and I play Call of Duty with this, I play Call of Duty with this, and to use this efficiently, I have to use the included case with this. This is old, already stinky, oily, and dirty. I want to change this one, but. I don't have I don't have the luxury to buy one right now because I don't want to spend money due to the 
uh, current conditions in the world. So, so yeah, I have to do that. It hits up even we have ceiling fan on. Even though it's cooling my own room already, this thing will heat up like a bitch. On on Call of Duty only, but playing games like Punishing Grey Raven, Fate Grand Order, Honkai Impact Third, Genshin Impact, I have no problem. I have no problem with the heat up. Now let's talk about the graphic quality settings. You can play with those games. In Punishing Grey Raven, I have everything on high, not ultra, and high. With HDR turn off and the FXAA turn on, so uh, I have. It looks better. It doesn't look blocky. It doesn't look. Uh, it uh, doesn't look like a badly uh, anti alias game. Frame rate is good. Stays in sixty. I have no problem with that. And uh, and I can play with my Bluetooth controller. I have no problem. So yeah, I love PGR. It's my pastime right now, but uh, but I play more of MiHoYo games to be honest, and Arc Knights. Arc Knights, no problem. If you turn off the game optimization setting in Arc Knights, you can play this in sixty FPS with no problem. It's it's good. It's it's good to play Arc Knights at sixty FPS rather than in forty, caused by the system optimization. Fate Grand Order and Princess Connect Red Dive. Both in Japanese versions, I have no problem playing those in 6, uh, I don't have no problem. FGO is very light game now to play, aside from back then, which is, uh, <laughs> uh, 2015, 18 2 gig RAM, and then it passes for 1.5 gig RAM, and then my old phone, which is a, where is it? Uh, I, let me see if I can find that little bitch. Yeah, there it is. I used to play Fight Grand Order in this phone. It has one gig RAM. Yeah, you can see it's battery. <laughs> I uh, I have hard time playing it from this because it stutters, it lags. But I did manage to play it. I have conquered very hard quests with it. So I have no problem. <laughs> and this Princess Connect in this if Fight Grand Order in this, no problem. Easy to play, no problem. Honkai Impact Third. Medium settings, 60 FPS both in uh, in fights and outside fights. 60 FPS. Uh, I've turned the shadows off. Post processing only the anti-aliasing turn on, uh, and that's it. Because if I turn this to high, it lags. Basically, stutters a lot during fights. So, as much uh, as much as I want to play this game. In 60 fps it's just kind of sad that i can't go high on the graphics uh which is really really sad for me i don't I, it looks good it looks good the uh, the game runs smoothly with that in 60 fps it's just once you turn it to high there's a there's this disparity in honka impact third from low medium to high low medium there, there's basically no difference but medium to high, there's basically a big difference, uh, which is really really sad. I don't know what's up with Mihoyo with that. There's there's this problem with Mihoyo. They make such good games, but they have problems with optimization. Even though they gave more options, it's not optimized. What the fuck, Mihoyo? <laughs> so that's a problem. Now in Genshin, it's a custom setting, uh, bordering on the lowest side. But, if you turn it in the lowest, it looks shit, to be honest. There's no shadows, the lights are way too... Okay, at first when I used to play this uh, Genshin Impact in this phone... Ahem, what's the problem with you, phone? <laughs> uh, when I used to play Genshin in this phone, I just set it up to... I just set it up to the lowest and played with no problem. Shadows, the problem, etc. I then lowest settings and then crank up the FPS to 60, uh, 60 cap. It's a problem. It stutters. It uh, this game basically hits up. Uh, 
it, it, this basic uh, this phone basically boils hot when played at 60 fps cap so i played around with the settings now if the game will let me get uh if the game will actually start to log in it's stuck okay there's it verify okay okay so let's wait for that i can show you the settings i have for genshin uh by the way i have genshin lock at 30 fps it's not a problem to play with that it's been fine for the most part so i've i've cranked the render resolution to the lowest mm. uh shadows at medium sfx and add everything low except with uh, environmental details set at medium also bloom turn on motion blur turn off because the motion blur is disgusting turn on the yeah uh, until aliasing to tmaa i think it's what it's called uh, in genshin's case it will stutter after every load because it's try to load it will try to load every uh how do, you, how do you say this it will try to load everything around so yeah it will feel yeah it will feel laggy it's uh, laggy with that now how the graphic settings the best you can do okay Render resolution, lowest, medium, low, lowest, then medium, lock it to 30. Um, with motion blur off, FPS cap at 30, and all yesing with DAA, can do, can do, and it all stay at balance right there. So, it's not gonna put pressure on your phone. It doesn't matter if, if the phone, uh, if the game says your graphic settings are smooth, it will still chug through your own phone. So, at least even though i have set this to this kind of setting at least it has some kind of detail that is acceptable to my eye playing this at the lowest setting basically doesn't quite cut it anymore even though it it, it it runs it runs at 30 fps it's not a problem i have no problem engaging in fights and the phone has no problem rendering all fights for example if i combo rosaria's uh, ultimate followed by sucrose and then mona and then go with yanfei uh, i have no problem with that it's not a problem and i do turn on the 60 fps cap when i go to dungeons and it's really it's better to do dungeon runs with 60 fps than doing overworld quests with 60 fps because the overworld is so <laughs> demanding that there will be constant uh hiccups uh frame dips here and there now this phone can do genshin in high settings but there's the problem of hiccups and stuttering mid fights and you can only viably play it on 30 fps cup now the game also offers 24 fps cup but don't do it no matter what kind of phone do you have, just lock it to 30. Don't go below that. It will. It is gonna be a stuttering mess. Even though, uh, with game spaces, uh, ability to give pro, pro gamer mode, doesn't do anything. It's just gonna drain your battery faster. It's not offering any kind of performance boost. Uh, I really wanted it. Uh, for. I, w I wish because realme is basically saying with realme ui 3.0 which will be based on android 12 that it's gonna rework on the game space so there's gonna be, be they're saying that it's gonna be a better game space than before which i hope because game space is shit basically basically so yeah i think that's it that's pretty much it about this phone this one year recollection uh, uh, retrospect i guess not recollection it's a good phone however in conclusion it's a good phone although your camera uh, camera needs nicely 
Although your video needs nicely, it can stream uh, the internet no problem. Software is good, software is optimized, but there are some luck behind paywall. There are ads sometimes. Yes, this OS, ha uh, this phone has ads whenever you try to install a <clears throat> an app, not through Play Store or not through the app market. If you're gonna sideload an app, you're gonna find no whatever kind of method you install an app, Play Store, app market, or just a side uh, side loading an APK. It will have that ads. It will show it. Uh, I will show an ad uh, which directly uh, links you back to app market. <laughs> it's a disgusting part, but that's the only thing you'll ever see. There's also the the other ad source of theirs. This uh black screen magazine, but I don't use those. I have those disabled, so it's not a problem. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, if you find this phone, do you want to buy this or not? Here's the answer for that. If it's selling for cheaper than the other products, yes, yes. Even today, this thing sells for like fourteen hundred yuan, which is basically like fifteen to sixteen thousand pesos here in the Philippines. It's not worth it. Don't buy this. There's also uh, you can find something like a uh, Realme QT Q3 Pro, Realme X7 for those cheaper than this, and they have basically better specs. AMOLED screen, baby. <laughs> if you want those AMOLED screen, they also offer Dolby Atmos for those who want a nice audio on your phone. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. In conclusion, it's not a bad phone. It's a good phone. If you want a cheap 5G, but then it's not a viable option anymore. This thing still sells for a high price, while the other updated versions are out in the market for cheaper. Oh god, it, seriously, like, let me go to Shopee for a bit. Uh-huh. Let me go to shop. I love to find that phone for you. Basically, this thing. If you can find a Realme QT uh, Q3 Pro, it sells for that price. It's easier. Do not buy this phone. Uh, and th uh, nowadays, maybe last year, because if I don't, if you want a five cheap five uh, cheap five G, yeah. This was the best solution you got. Now, before we go, let's talk about 5G. In my city, there's no 5G yet. No official statement that's 5G supported. Although, uh, here occasionally you can you can see the SIM card uh, shows 5G, but no, there's no official 5G in this city yet. But I did test its 5G cap uh, capabilities on another city when I went to another city to process some papers. Fast. There's nothing I can say, but it's definitely faster than 4G. It loads, uh, it connects to the web much snappier, much, much faster. I have no problem it's connecting with Brave browser. Mm -hmm. mm, sorry for that. Yeah, that's basically it. The 5G, it's, uh, it connects, it's fast, it's good, better than 5G, uh, 4G, better, better than 4G+. Plus. 5G, the 5G, it's really good, no problem with that. Ah. So yeah, aside from that, conclusion, do not buy this phone unless you find this very, very cheap. Because there are other phones in the same price, price range as this one that are better spec. For example, this phone has the same price as a Redmi. 10x 5G and that one has a uh, Dimensity 820 SoC which is a better than this this is basically Dimensity 720 SoC do not buy this I swear do not buy this if you find this in, 
if you find this phone's price and the same as others do not find it buy this even though it has a better ui and everything just don't buy this just get something that has better specs and the same price for example uh, yeah the one i saw you earlier realme q3 pro cheaper than this has way better specs and if you want your amoled it runs on amoled it has 120 hertz display better chipset dimensity 1100 soc no brainer no brainer so yeah if i did find the uh if i, I want to express any regret i have for buying this phone if i have found those second hand experience back then xperia xperia xz2 that one it sells for uh 110 bucks i should have bought the, uh i would buy those instead instead of this mm -hmm. at least if there's one thing this thing goes on for itself is that it, it does better in thermals than its uh siblings like uh, the realme 7 and 7 pro the, those are the siblings of this one uh what did i say it's doing better in thermals than those uh, realme 7 with its uh the uh mediatek g95t those thing run hot even though your room is well ventilated uh cool well ventilated and set and such this thing will run cooler than that this is the thing it wants <laughs> the biggest pro this thing has against its siblings also better uh audio support real uh, dolby atmos aside from that not worth it <laughs> so yeah thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you on whatever shenanigan i have in the future. Thank you.